I'll show you how to create a simple 360 degree scene in Blender and turn it into this. Or this. Or this. Or even this. This is one of my all-time favorite AI workflows because it's super easy to use and so much fun. You can use it in your browser or install it locally for free and use it with your favorite stable diffusion model or even the brand new, absolutely mind-blowing Flux image model by Black Forest Labs. And this one is just mind-blowingly good. The best image model I've seen so far. I'll also show you how you can seamlessly integrate characters or other assets into these 3D environments how to combine them with my AI compositing workflow for a full low-budget virtual production environment. And I also want to try traveling to these worlds using my VR headset to see if they hold up in person. So let's not waste any time and jump straight into Blender. Here I'm creating a simple arena using primitive shapes. I'll try to keep it as simple as possible as the AI textures will do a lot of the heavy lifting. But you can be as detailed as you like here. I'm using simple box modeling, but you could of course also use sculpting for landscapes like mountains or even use this workflow to retexture photo scans. Make sure there's something interesting in every direction because we want to use the full 360 degree field of view. But since we will be projecting textures onto this environment, we also need geometry for the sky. So I'm also creating a sphere and scale it so that my scene is inside it. Next, we need a way to transfer the scene geometry information to the AI. And if you watch my previous tutorials on AI rendering, you know that we're going to use render passes. The first one will be a depth pass, and it's just a representation of the distance of each pixel to the camera, where white pixels are close to the camera and black pixels are further away. And we can then use a depth control net with Flux or Stable Diffusion to generate a new image based on that depth information. The next pass we will create is an outline or line art pass. This one will show the edges of our geometry as white lines and it helps us to bring the generated image even closer to the original 3D environment. To set them up we must first create a camera in the center of our environment and bring it up roughly where we want our eye level to be. Let's call this one projection camera. The direction is not too important but if you have a main element in your scene I recommend pointing it at that. In the output properties, change your resolution to a 2 to 1 aspect ratio, and I'm using 2048 times 1024. Go to your render properties and change your render engine to cycled. You can change it back to Eevee to render your final shot for faster render times, but for this next step, we need to be in cycles. Now we can go to the camera properties and change the type from perspective to panoramic and the panorama type to equi. equi Equi rectangular. And if you now look through the camera and change to rendered view, you can see absolutely nothing because we don't have any lights in the scene. You can of course create some to check if everything is still there, but you can also just trust me. Now I want to export the depth information of this panoramic image. For this I go to view layer and activate Z. Let's render out an image, go to the compositing tab, click use nodes and connect a viewer node to the depth output. And you can see our depth information is here, but it's not where we want it. We want all the values to be between 0 and 1. And for this we can just add a normalized node. Oh, and make sure that you set the color management to standard. The view transform should be standard. Next we need to add an invert color node because we want white pixels to be close to the camera and black pixels further away. And you can also add an RGB curves node and play around with the contrast of this image so that we have more detail closer to the camera. Finally just add a file output node and set a path for your image. Render out the image again and this is our final depth pass. To quickly generate some outlines we used Blender's freestyle tool for my AI rendering workflows. But unfortunately this does not work with Cycle's panoramic camera. But instead we can just create a simple outline shader. For this just select an object and add a new shader. And let's call that outline. Go into the shading workspace and you can delete the principled BSDF. Create a bevel node and a geometry node and then a vector math node. Change that one to dot product and connect the normal output of the bevel and the normal output of the geometry. And then you can go to the rendered view to see the effect. 
But I want the outlines to be white on black, so let's add another invert node and then add a map range node after that. By playing around with the values in the map range node and the radius and samples of the bevel node, we can change the thickness of our outlines. And from the camera, they should look somewhat like this. So now you can set a render location or simply save the image out of the render view. And here are our two final passes. Before I show you how to transform these render passes into stunning textures on your own computer for free, let me show you an even simpler installation-free solution that works in your browser. For this, I'm using Leonardo AI, which is an easy to use web interface for stable diffusion and other AI models. They offer a free plan, but for this workflow, we need at least the apprentice membership, starting from $10 a month, 12 if you choose monthly billing. In Leonardo, go to image creation, and I'm using the cinematic Kino model with the preset style cinematic. For the image dimensions, you want to go to more and switch that to two to one. And for the number of images that generate each time you run the prompt, I will change that to two. Next, you can put in a prompt and I'm using this format here. You can add your own scene description here. Click on this image here to select how you want to guide the image. So go to view more and let's click depth to image, confirm. And here we upload the image of our depth map. Now, the problem is that Leonardo doesn't know that we are already giving it a depth map. Usually you would upload an image and then Leonardo will generate the depth map based on that image. So this can lead to some weird results and this is why I set the strength to a low value. Next, we want to load in our line art pass. So click on the image, view more, and this time choose edge to image and let's upload our line art pass. Let's lower the strength a little bit to give it some more freedom and let's just run the prompt. And you can see this one is broken, but this one looks really good. Now that we have an image that we like, we can also use this one as the depth guidance. So go to the depth guidance, click on the image, go to your generations and now select this one instead. And now you can bump up the strength and now we could change the prompt to something else and see how well this worked. They both look pretty cool. If you want to create an image in another style, you can also add Leonardo elements. So let's maybe do old school comic. And now we have an image like this. But before we can use these images in Blender, we need to do one last step. We need to upscale them. Leonardo has different upscaling options, but my favorite one is the universal upscaler here. Add an image, go to your generations, and let's select this one. For the style, I want to choose cinematic and I bump up the creativity just a little bit. And here is your final upscaled image. You can see this worked really well. So now we can just download the image and switch back to Blender. Here we want to project our image back onto the scene geometry. So first we need to make sure that all the objects have UVs. But don't worry, they don't need to be good. So you can just use the smart UV project. Let's create a new shader and let's call it projection and create an environment texture. Load in the upscaled image. Next, you want to make sure that Node Wrangler is enabled. So go to preferences and search for Node Wrangler and check if it's enabled. Now you can press Ctrl T and you want to connect the object output to your vector input. Next, create an empty. Go back to your texture and select this empty in the object input. And when you now move it around, it looks like you're traveling through hyperspace. But if you line it up with your projection camera, everything will fall into place. And this looks really cool, as long as you don't turn around. Unfortunately, creating images with Leonardo will make them not tiled, so we have this ugly seam here. Now we could use a website like this one to blur the edges a little bit. And this definitely helps, but it's still visible. But now let's look at a workflow that runs locally on your own computer and will produce extremely high resolution, seamless images for free. We're going to use ComfyUI, a node-based interface for stable diffusion and other AI models. And I created a free step-by-step -step guide that will show you how to install it and where you need to download and put all the models for this to work. Once you have everything set up, you can just drag and drop my workflow into the ComfyUI interface. Double check if all the models are loaded. I'm using Wildcard Turbo. This will just patch the model so it will be seamless. For upscaling, I'm using Clear Reality version one and I'm using the SDXL Pro Max model um, as my control net model. So now you just need to put in your depth pass here and your line art 
here. When you now click Cube Prompt, the workflow will automatically generate an image and upscale it for you. So with this upscaled image, we can now just go back into Blender and change out the image in our environment texture node. Pretty cool, right? And you see how easy it is to rapidly iterate and try out different environments with this workflow. While I was working on this video, new amazing control net models for the new AI image model Flux by Black Forest Labs were released and I wanted to try them out with this workflow. The advantage of Flux is that you can prompt with a more natural language style and that it will follow your prompt way better than any other AI model. I found this simple workflow by Isahe on Reddit and installing it is very simple. You just need to follow these steps and I'll link this post in the description. Once I had everything set up, I loaded in my depth map here and created this prompt. Feel free to use it as a template. I then just clicked Q prompt and I was absolutely blown away by the result. The details and especially the lighting, everything felt so vivid and believable. To improve quality even more, I tried upscaling it using the ultimate stable diffusion upscale. And I just connected the model and ran the prompt and to my surprise, it worked so good. Look at this. Look at this detail here. But unfortunately, the seamless model patch that we used to create seamless images with stable fusion did not work for Flux. So instead, I created this node group here, this setup, that will automatically blend the edges of your image to make it seamless. And this usually works really well because the images by Flux are often very symmetrical with my prompt. Still, you can change the size of the effect here, but try to keep it as small as possible. And look at these amazing results. I really wanted to go to these places and experience them. And that's when I remembered that I still had an old Oculus Quest lying around. So in theory, I should just be able to connect my Oculus. What? This is so cool. Okay, it's tiny. Let's, let's scale it up. <laughs> that's amazing. Like it's probably really underwhelming for you because you can't see the 3D effect, but it's so cool. It really feels like I'm here. Let's load another Stable Diffusion XL one. And wow, this is amazing for SDXL. This looks so good. It's funny how everything is illuminated by sunlight, but we don't have a sun anywhere here. And yeah, you can see as we leave this area in the center here, everything is falling apart and the illusion becomes obvious that we have like stretching uh, textures here everywhere. Still looks pretty interesting. And I already have some ideas how we could fix this in the future. <sighs> but I must say I feel quite alone in this world. So let's now add characters and assets into the scene. Of course we can put anything we want into these scenes, but I feel like this one needs some night. So I just go to Tripo 3D and type in the prompt night. And we can now generate one, but I'll just take this one. This looks pretty cool. And put him into the blender scene. Let's go to his shader, create a principal BSDF one, and let's make him a bit more metallic and play around with the roughness of the metal. And you can see he already integrates somewhat well into the scene because we used an emission shader for the surrounding geometry and this actually casts light onto him. But now I want him to actually cast shadows onto the surrounding environment. The easiest way to do that is just to go to our environment shader and change out the emission for a principled BSDF one. And let's also create some emission just by plugging in the color into the emission and bringing it up a little bit, just because otherwise it will be really dark. But now I actually want to copy this first part here of the shader node setup and go to the world tab and plug this all into the background color. Now we can increase the strength and this will act like an HDRI image lighting our scene. But I need to turn off ray visibility shadow for my sphere, otherwise it would block the light. Now our environment texture looks really flat. So I'm just creating a bump map again, plugging it into the normal and plugging in the color into the height, reducing the strength. And now I'm plugging in a color ramp node so that the effect only happens in the darker areas of the image. So now we have our character casting soft shadows here because we have a pretty soft lighting setup. But let's enhance these contact shadows by adding an ambient occlusion node. When I like the strength of the effect, I can just add a mix color node, plug in the ambient occlusion effect here and the original color here, set the factor to one and set the mix to multiply. And this will just multiply the black values on top. And you can see this enhances the effect even more. 
I can now also add new lights into the scene and my character will react to them and cast shadows accordingly. With this shader setup I can basically throw any texture onto this geometry and it will always look cool. Oh by the way, I'll be uploading the Blender sample files on my Patreon, so you can just copy the shader settings if you want. Your support helps me a lot to create these videos, as these workflows take a lot of time to develop and test. As a thank you for your support, you'll also get access to our community Discord, where we do community projects, and I try to help out everyone wherever I can if you run into any problems. Now of course this workflow still has some limitations. For example, we cannot go too far away from the original projection camera, otherwise the image will fall apart. But I think it's already good enough to create environments for fighting games, to create consistent backgrounds or images for your AI movies, or to create 3D backgrounds for virtual production studios. Now what if you don't have a multi-million dollar production studio at home? Well, in this case you can use my compositing workflow from my last video. You can just use the free app CamTrack AR to film your subject and the app will automatically track your phone's movements while you film and you can easily import this tracking data into your Blender scene. Now you just need to render out your Blender background sequence and import the original video and the rendered background into my AI compositing workflow and click Q prompt. The workflow will then automatically cut out the subject, match the lighting to the background and fix the edges of your subject. Another fun thing you can do with the Blender workflow is to animate the texture. I tried to do this with the new image to video generators like Runway and Dream Machine, but unfortunately it was impossible to get a static camera. So I went back to ComfyUI and created this workflow that generates a looped animated video based on the depth map and a prompt. And especially clouds and water and smoke effects look really cool with this workflow. I wouldn't recommend it for static environments, it can be a bit much here, but it's a lot of fun to play around with and it's great for animated 3D backgrounds where you can hide the imperfections with depth of field for example. I'll put it on my Patreon so you can play around with it. I bet you already have a bunch of ideas what you could do with these 3D environments. If you create something with it, make sure to tag me in your work or send me a link. I always love to see what you come up with. Thank you very much for watching and for all my Patreon supporters who make these videos possible. See you next time.